We'd like to welcome you all here tonight. We have a special event. Actually, it's very special because we've got the publisher and we've got some authors of the magazine. And I just spent time reading all of the articles. And I must say, I hope that you get a chance and an opportunity because I think we can all identify with the articles that are written in here. You know, we can see the ways that we're more alike than we are different. Hello, I'm Carlene Cross. In my talk, I will give a brief description of the Afghan battle in which my son died. I will also talk about the Army's uh, cover-up of the affair. Hi, my name is Sue Peterson. I use the phrase, I'm a financial psychologist, uh, with quote marks around it, as I'm actually a chartered financial analyst and a financial advisor. But my work with uh, individuals and money often requires a fair amount of psychology. Hi, I'm Sandy Sabursky. Elderwise is something that um, grew out of a seed for the desire for uh, really working from dignity and respect uh, for our elders. Hello, I'm Tom Orton. I'm going to start off briefly talking about my Parkinson's. After accepting the diagnosis, I began to look for someone or something to blame. Determining blame or responsibility is probably a better word. Helps give shape and impetus to forgiveness. But without forgiveness, blame can turn into obsession. What I'd like to do is start with Carlene first. Okay, I'm going to ask for a little, your patience tonight. I lost my son um, four years ago in the Afghan war and I have not spoken publicly about it since then and so this might be a little bit difficult. I will try my hardest to keep my composure. Jason's death was complicated by the fact that he had been killed in an ambush that would become one of the most controversial battles of the Afghan war, the Battle of Wanat. I thought of my son making his conscious choice that day to give his life for his buddies. What it was my job to face whatever years I had left with the same bravery Jason had. He had become the teacher and I the pupil. Thank you. You always, you never, all of us have heard that tossed at us at a conversation with a loved one. And these kind of words are often just, you know, the tip of an iceberg that really isn't necessarily revealing itself at the moment of what's really beneath the surface. But boy, can they deep freeze a relationship. And what I wrote about in my article and I want to talk through tonight is what I think are four common misconceptions about forgiveness that often keep people from actually proceeding to do that act. I sit in meetings oftentimes with, ki with the siblings, with the children after the second parent has died. And that's when the gloves come off and the kids start saying, mom always, dad never. And all those hurt that you think you raise your children completely fairly and equally and there's nothing that any of them would have to say to one another, it's all gonna come out. And I would really recommend that if you have the time and the courage to call each of your kids and say, what have I done financially in your life that you're gonna say was not fair? You may have to bite your tongue when they tell you something <laughs> because it's gonna be their point of view. You may not agree with it, but hear them out. I'm going to talk a little bit about eldering. And eldering is a verb that involves some work. To become elder is not just what you get from becoming older, but it's from doing what I like to talk about as the work of aging. Living in this world provides endless opportunities to be upset and angry. So my thesis statement is that the ability to forgive is essential for our own peace of mind. And it's essential for our own personal freedom. And it's essential to live a full and enriching life. I'm also going to talk about PD tonight because it owns a corner of the subject that we're talking about tonight, which is forgiveness. And my corner of that is forgiving yourself. What you need for the long run is something more substantial than that. You need something that will help you forgive yourself long range for succumbing to depression, for hating your body, for not doing what it, it, you want it to, and for any number of things that, that are just increasing all the time. 
To start the questions, are there times when we shouldn't forgive? I mean, is there a time when you feel like you need to get justice first before you can forgive? I think there's a place to seek justice after Jason was killed uh, and the group of boys were killed. The parents, you know, created and pushed a campaign to try to get the Army to be accountable, and that's what led to the Department of Defense investigation. So I think you can do that sort of thing, push towards justice, but I, I don't think you can tie yourself to the results of that. Um, it, it's either going to go one way or another, and, and you, have to, um, you have to separate your uh, forgiveness from the results of an investigation like that because y you can never control that. You know, it, it might turn out that the Army changes. It might turn out that they don't. So I, I think you can try to, try to seek justice but also um, forgive in spite of what happens. Um.